What the hell is going on, Retro Freaks? Today we are gonna look at our NES collection and talk about the top 10 most expensive games in our collection. We started the series, I think this is gonna be the third installment in the series, yep. where the first one we just did everything in our collection and it did pretty well. People seemed to enjoy us talking about it, so we figured, what the hell? Let's just dive into the consoles. Yeah. Uh, so NES, we got a lot of awesome bangers for the NES, but what's wild is we didn't pay full price for a lot of these. Uh, the one, I will say the one, our biggest, most expensive game, yeah. we did pay full price for, but we flipped our way to it and essentially got it for free. Yeah, so those of you who've been around for a while, you know what that game is. Yes. But stay got, tuned nonetheless. We got a lot of games to talk about, 10 games to talk about, yep. and all the games totaled it up, 1600 bucks. So we got some rippers. Let's jump in. Number 10, the most expensive game in our NES collection. Here we go. Before we get into the, the 10th game in the list, or any of the games on this list for that matter, these are all loose prices. We're gonna, this whole series, yep. we will give you the prices of how we collect. So we collect NES loose, yep. we'll make these custom cases, we did a video on that a long time ago, but number 10 is Darkwing Duck coming in at $69.99. Yes, that is wild, kind of pricey, but the same price as like a modern video game, mm -hmm. and I'd rather play Darkwing Duck than a lot of other yeah, modern, yeah. like, modern video games. This game is pretty cool. Capcom, a Disney game, platformer. This is a game we got when we bought like a big bundle of stuff. So yeah. we, we got it for pretty cheap, I would say. If you broke it down, I don't know exactly, but less than probably 69 bucks. This game is pretty good though. It's awesome. Uh, a lot of the Disney Capcom games on the NES oh. are, are really dang good, but this is this is up there. It's top of the heap. So I just like, I like the colors. I like the yeah. way it looks. I like the way it plays. A lot of NES games, they are just, they're simple and they're fun. And especially like there's Disney Capcom yeah, games. Yeah, and I love the color palette of Darkwing Duck. Yes. That darker yes. little like detective purple and black. I'm a big fan of the colors. So yeah, yeah this, is, this is one of my favorite Capcom Disney games. Uh, let's move on to number nine. Number nine, I do not remember exactly what we paid for this, but I do remember where we found it. Yes. And I do remember it was in a box of stuff. And I think Robert grabbed it and lifted it up. And I think we both thought for a split second, it was Power Blade 2. But number nine on our list is Power Blade 1. Did we get this for five bucks I or 10 we, bucks? I think we got it for $5 at a garage sale, yeah. loose. Yep. And I think at the time of filming it and the time of finding it, it was like a $58, $60 game. Mm -hmm. But now it's freaking over $70, $70 and 86 cents yeah. for the original Power Blade. This game is phenomenal. This game is so fun if you're into those types of platformers like kind of run and gun but not really you have like a, a, a thing you throw yeah like a boomerang or whatever this game is it's beautiful the power blade. yeah it's the power blade it's it's so fun but it was so fun to go out and find this at a garage sale. yeah because in the 2020 we found this maybe 2022 yeah you do not find nes games at garage no. sales but we found a stack and power blade was one of them yeah absolutely uh, so it's one of our crown jewels <laughs> i love this game i it's one of my my favorites on the nes so it was really cool to find it at a garage sale and have that story behind it Number eight is another NES game we got from when we bought that huge lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And this game is so fun. I didn't even know this game existed until we bought that huge lot. And that's G.I. Joe Real American Hero. There are two G.I. Joe games for the NES. This is the Real American one. I am a real American. The other one is a Capcom game, I believe. They're both really, yeah, really they're both good. Really good. This is a little bit more down my lane. I like to call it uh, G.I. Joe Real American Porno. Yes. But this game is, is is a damn good game. It comes in at $78.92. We're approaching $100 yeah. just for loose cart wise. This game is really good. It's really tough. I do like how you can switch between the different characters. Yeah. They have different abilities. The boss fights are cool. This I think is my favorite G.I. Joe game on the NES. This game is so much freaking fun. It's a bucket list to beat this game. Yeah, I would it's rather really have this one than the the other one but the other one's still good yes so we're not shitting on that and but. we got this in a bundle so again we got mm -hmm. it for way cheaper than what it's going for it's so wild how we uh, cured some of these games yeah, you know? yeah, they, yeah. they just kind of happen and now we are sitting on some gold mines you yeah know? number seven on the list good old shatterhand one of the funniest looking covers i think in uh, the yeah. nes catalog <laughs> just the guy with the white tee the shades on just how you doing 
But if you're a fan of Batman on the NES, if you're a fan of Power Blade, this is right in that yes. that uh, realm. Um, even a little bit like Strider on the NES, I feel like. But this, this game is awesome. I love this game. This game would be very high if I had to make a, you know, top whatever list on the NES. But Shatterhand, uh, it's it's about an $80 game. About 80 bucks. Yeah. Uh, this game, I feel like a lot of people don't talk about. I don't hear a lot about Shatterhand. I feel, I hear a lot about Batman and Power Blade and all that stuff, but Shatterhand's badass. And also, if you're a fan of like modern games like Prison City, yeah. it's very similar to NES Shatterhand. Mm. Dude, this game, the cover looks wild. You already mentioned that, but the gameplay is phenomenal. It's tight. Yeah. It feels great. The music's incredible mm -hmm. in Shatterhand. This is this is a top tier NES. Yeah, game. absolutely. Moving on to number six. We don't have the banger, but the first Mega Man, believe it or not, is actually up there in price. Number six on our list, Mega Man Mega 1. Man. 80, 80 bucks. bucks. 80 bucks for the first Mega Man, which was shocking because we almost have the full set of Mega Man. We're missing the, the banger, Mega Man 5. Mm -hmm. That's the expensive one. But when I was looking it up, I was like, the first Mega Man is $80? Yeah. We did not get it for that. We got it for way cheaper. I don't even remember. I think we've had it for a while. I don't remember how we got yeah, it. I can't remember. Um, but it's kind of weird. I don't know why that one's so more expensive than the other ones. I don't I know. I think it's because it became to fame at Mega Man 2. And everybody oh, had and Mega, then Man everyone got Mega Man 2. Oh, and everyone got Mega Man 2, so nobody it's, has the yeah. first one. I, I think that's um, but maybe it's, what's going on. But. It started the freaking Mega Man series yeah. and franchise, and then it blew up, and now you got Mega Man X, you got Mega Man, all this stuff. But it started Mega Man. Original. Yeah, I, NES. I don't uh, dislike the first game, but if you were trying to get into the series, would I pay that for it? No. Mm, probably not, but uh, it, it's it's a good game. It's but. it's serviceable. Mm -hmm. I, I think my favorite is either 2 or 11, which, is, the best. which is modern. Yeah. Uh, but the first one, you know, you got to pay its own. There, there's it's there's some whatever. NES fans watching this saying, you like 11 more than 2. Ah. Go play 11. Yeah, That's what I'm going to say. 11 is yeah. badass. Yeah. <laughs> but now let's move on to number five. Number five most expensive NES game in our collection is Ninja Gaiden 3. Ninja Gaiden 3, however you want to say it or pronounce it. I've always said it. Gaiden. Gaiden. I've always been Gaiden. Ninja Gaiden. Yeah. I, I like saying it wrong to make people angry on the mm -hmm. internet. But this game is going for $85.22. If you like Ninja Gaiden, this is a staple. It's This is a yeah. recent addition, I feel like. Didn't we get this like about a year ago or yeah, so? Yeah, because we had yeah. the first two. I think we snagged this at a maybe a convention. Yeah. So we probably yeah. paid up for it a little bit. But yeah. I don't think we paid quite... I think maybe like 70 Yeah. Still kind of expensive, but... Man, it's it's nice to have all three Ninja Gaidens, Ninja Gaidens, you know? This game plays great, the music's great, it's it's tight, the controls are tight. It's just, it, it's I, such an awesome game. I don't know how it compares to the, the first two. Um, I've dabbled with this game. Yes. I've beat the first two. I've never beat the third game. I don't know why. Just got to get to it. Well, I've never beat it either. Uh, yeah. But add that to the list of games I want to beat. Yeah. <laughs> but this game is so cool. And it's, uh, it's an expensive NES game we have in our collection. Number four is Gargoyles Quest 2. So, Demon's Crest is the game that gets all the love, right? Yeah. Uh, little Creston. Little Creston, yeah, that's yeah. his name. Nobody, yeah. people get mad when I call him Creston, but that's his name. <laughs> yeah. But the, the first game in the series, I believe, is a Game Boy game. Yeah. Gargoyles Quest 2 is on the NES, and then Demon's Crest is the third installment in the series. He's from the Ghosts of Goblins universe. But nonetheless, $99.49 for yes. our copy. Of Gargoyles Quest. Basically a hundred dollars for Gargoyles Quest 2 and these games are so fun. They're so hard, which I like. I like hard games. I mean it's NES hard. It's just a beautiful game. I Did we get this at a convention? I think? No, this I think was a part of that big lot. Oh, was lot. it the yeah. big lot? Yeah, so yeah. we paid a little bit less because we got a lot of stuff. It's just, it's nice to have like the full set. Obviously Demon's Crest gets talked about a ton, yep. but that game is awesome so it should be talked about. But these, Gargoyles Quest 1 and 2 are both awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's one of the better, I mean I love the game on the Game Boy. Yeah. Um, I haven't played it a ton, but uh, Mega Man 29 was playing it. I don't own the game, so then I was emulating it on, <laughs> on, on my Wii. It was like, man, this game's pretty freaking cool. Um, but I have played this, and I have played uh, Demon's Crest, so they're yeah. both really good. Gargoyles Quest 2 is yeah. uh, it's a banger, and it's freaking almost $100. That's wild. Yeah, pretty crazy. Number three on the list is one of my all-time favorite NES games. If you guys have been around for a while, I actually, we don't have very many episodes where it's just me or just you. I did a no death run of Scat on the NES yes. because I love it so much. I'm working on a co-op no death run of Scat with my buddy Dan. It's this game goes for $113 and one penny. 
I don't know if the price has been affected at all. This game got a re-release through Limited Run Games. Yes, yeah, so I don't know. If, I don't know if it's dropped or if it's gone up. Yeah, but, but I, I collectors are weird. So people have probably Scat, yeah. and then also have the new version. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Collectors are collectors are weird. Uh, but Scat is an amazing game, dude. Some of the levels, like that level where you're going like up. Like, yeah. I haven't gotten that far myself, but I'm watching you play. I'm like, how do you know what you're doing? Like it's yeah, that's one of the it's a, levels it's a beautiful game. game. Yeah. I love that it. it's it's a shmup kind of because I love shooters. It is it's just so cool. Yeah, I've, this game's uh, very. Uh, if you've played Forgotten Worlds, kind of reminds you of that yes. a little bit. Um, but it's still got its own unique quirks, and the fact that it's co-op is awesome. Yeah, it's badass. And uh, it, it, if you're a fan of shmups and a fan of running guns. So it's like Contra meets a shooter, in a way. I, I, I think it's just such a cool mechanic. Yeah, because it, it basically feels like you're a Contra guy with a jetpack. That's kind, yeah, of, that's yeah. kind of what it feels yeah, like. Yeah, you've got your satellite guns. It's just it's, really fun. Dude, it's, yeah. Scat is an amazing game. Uh, let's move on to number two, most expensive NES games in our collection. Good old Bucky O'Hare. Yes. Konami. Let's go. A game that everybody talks about, everybody mentions when you have it for the NES. This game is $154 mm -hmm. loose. Very expensive. Is it worth it? I don't know if it's worth that much, but it is a good game. Yeah, it's worth playing. It's, it is it's worth a really playing. good platformer. I, I I also, the, the old school figures for it are really neat oh, too. Oh, like yeah. these little toys? Yeah, yes, they, they're, they're dope. And what's really cool about this game that's kind of unique for the NES era is I like how when you fire it up, you can kind of pick your levels. Yeah. Kind of like Mega Man in that way where you can mm -hmm. be like, okay, where do I, I want to go here first? Okay, let's go here. Let's go to this planet. Let's go to this planet. It's a really fun game. I don't know if it's $150, $150 worth, but I think you should play it. I think it's it deserves to be talked about and it, it's a fun game. Great yeah. platform. Yeah. Konami had such a good run during this time. <laughs> yeah. Go and then Bucky O'Hare. Bucky O'Hare. And then the last game we're going to talk about, this game is freaking four times the price of Bucky O'Hare. <laughs> We paid full value for That's it. It's actually more than four times. Four times. Yeah. I don't know how math works. Yeah. Dude, four times, five times, whatever. And that's Power Blade 2. <laughs> a crown jewel yep. in our NES collection. Two years ago, I think, we flipped our way towards this game. So yep. we got it essentially for free by going to garage sales and selling stuff on eBay. This game is phenomenal. Yeah. Again, I don't know if it's worth $850. Yeah, no. But I think you should play it. Yeah. Emulate it. Yeah. Uh, but this game is so fun. It's tight. It, it, I think it's better than the first Power Blade, and the first Power Blade is also mm -hmm. incredible. I just love the way it, it plays and it performs. The music's really great. I love the colors. It's it's very similar to like Batman and all that stuff. We've already mentioned that when yep. we talked about the first one. But when we got it, I was like, Oh my god, it's yeah. real, dude. Playing it's a true joy. It's a great NES game. Um, I do want to shout out RetroWare, though. The, the game Prison City. If, yes. you're, if you're into Power Blade 1 and Power Blade 2, and you're like, well, I would never pay. I wouldn't pay 800 bucks for it either had we not done the series and flipped our way to it. But Prison City is such an ode to these Power Blade oh, games. Yes, and if you haven't played it, I, I just want those guys to get money and keep doing this stuff yeah, because it, it was an awesome ode to the Power Blade 1 and 2 games. I highly recommend Prison mm -hmm. City and also highly recommend Power Blade 2 and yeah. Power Blade 1. I think it was like, what well, wasn't it like one of like the last NES? I don't know if it was the last one, but it was, it was, it was a, a later, it was a release. later release, yeah. so it, there wasn't many out there, so that's why it's $850, but it's so insane, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's like one of those, when you go to conventions and you're looking at tables and you're like, it's in the glass case, and you're like, yeah. oh my god. I think when we were at SoCal Retro Gaming Expo, we seen somebody that had a CIB. Which oh, is, <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what that's going for. Yeah, yeah. and this, yeah, 850 loose, Yeah, guys. I want to say it was almost two grand. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, that's cool as hell, yeah. but I yeah. wouldn't pay that. No. Um, I just, I'm into playing games, but Power Blade 2, holy crap. It was such an achievement to get it. Yep. Such an achievement. We're working on a NDR of it. Mm -hmm. We're working on freaking just beating it. It's, mm -hmm. it, dude, this game is so good. Yeah. So good. So fun. Speaking of fun, it is time to review this beer from Barntown Brewery. This is a brewery we've covered a lot on the channel. A lot of sours, obscure, yes. weird type of sours that they do. But this is just straight down the, the old proverbial path. It's an ode to the Drake Bulldogs. Yes, so we live in Des Moines, Iowa, yep. and there's a college called Drake University. It's a private college, and their mascot is a bulldog. Yeah. So then this brewery, I, I don't know if it's a collaboration, but I assume so, with uh, the Drake College, the official beer of uh, Do Great. So I think Do Great's like a 
non-profit organization that Drake University does. Yeah. This beer probably helps with that. Spike's Ale. It's a golden ale with a bulldog on it. Yeah. What do you think? Very vanilla. Middle of the road ale. Lager-esque taste. But also, it's a golden ale, so yeah. I wasn't expecting... No, I wasn't expecting something weird. No, yeah, yeah. I wasn't I wasn't like, oh, this is a PB&J sour. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a golden ale. It's it's pretty good. Mm. Again, I, I don't lean towards this style of beer mm. that often, but I will say it's it's nice and clear. Yep. It's a nice, easy drinker. It is creamy. Yep. It is smooth. You do get good taste. You do yep. get, it is refreshing. Like if you go to like a, a Drake basketball game and you got this, that'd yep. be fun, dude. Yeah, like, absolutely. Sometimes breweries have to make just staples and standards yep. and then they can make crazy stuff. Yep. So this is like, if you're into gold nails or just regular beer, like it's definitely a tier above like, you know, a junk lager and yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, for sure, for but sure. They, but this is really good. Yeah, I think it's it's uh, refreshing is how I would say. Um, would I seek this out all the time because of what I like? No, just like you, yeah, I'm not exactly. into like golden nails really. I don't ever buy those. But you know, in so the that, realm of the style it's doing, it's, it's, I, it's I, good. Yeah, I think, yeah. It, I think it scratches the itch if you're into that style. And also mm -hmm. it'd be great on a hot summer day. It'd be yeah. great like if you get done mowing the yard or, yeah. or it's just cause it's light, it's refreshing. It's like, ah, yeah. and you don't feel heavy. I drink a lot of IPAs and those are heavy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm used to that feeling, but yeah, dude, this is, I'm enjoying this, and it's it's kind of cool that they're partnering with a nonprofit that's local. <clears throat> yeah. So that's always that's always fun. An enjoyable beer, an enjoyable console. Oh, I love the NES. Dude. Love the NES. Uh, happens to be uh, one of our most favorite things to collect for, and uh, the first console we both ever played. Yes. Yeah. Which is wild because I was born in '94 and you were born in '86. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Eight years apart. In the comment section below, let us know what's the crown jewel of your collection. It doesn't have to be the most valuable, but what's the game in your collection that you are the most proud of? Or the NES. Ooh. We would love to know. Chop it up in the old comment sections. You know how we do. We appreciate you tuning in, subscribing to the channel. We'll catch you on the next episode of the one and only Gaming Off The Grid.